Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to the world of Hearts of Iron 4. It's been a while since I played this game uh, last on this channel, and today I thought I'd, uh, you know, just play a quick game of uh, Communist Czechoslovakia. I realize it's sort of an edgy concept to go communist, and not many people actually do it, but that's exactly the reason why I'm going to do it. Because, you know, last time we went uh, democratic as the Soviet Union, which is very, um, very edgy indeed. Well, it was mostly like communist democracy, I don't know. Stuff like that. Socialist dem democratic, uh, something like that. So today we will go hard communist. And I think not many people pick this tree, but I think that it's actually quite, um, quite interesting. Because if you go to, uh, Check socialism right here, you can actually get rid of a very bad debuff, which is the divided nation. Which is basically uh, mimicking the divide between the Czechs and the Slovaks during this period of time. I suppose also the Carpathian Ruthenians or the, I suppose the U Ukrainians at this point. But um, that means that we can actually do the industrial legacy focused on the, um, the Czech side of things instead of doing the the sort of mutual benefit side, and this actually gives us more um, more factories as, a, as sort of a result of that. So uh, I thought about doing this in uh, Route 56, because that's just an amazing mod. However, uh, through some random event, I don't know how, uh, you actually lose Southern Slovakia without any, uh, without having any input on the matter, and I couldn't figure out uh, how to get you know, how to avoid that, and it seems that at the moment there's actually no way to avoid that. You just lose Southern Slovakia without, uh, you know, even... You can't do anything about it, which is quite a shame. However, all that means is that we'll just be doing this in, uh, well... Not quite vanilla, I do have uh, the world of all... World of Alternatives. Ah, that's a hand, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, world of Alternatives mod um, running, so that means that, for example, Germany will be going down opposed to Hitler and uh, potentially going to revive the Kaiserreich or re-establish free elections. France will most likely go down uh, revised to Versailles. Britain, I think, will be a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. Uh, the United States will either go communist or fascist. Canada will go. Uh, patrician and etc etc you get the you get the idea so this is going to be a little bit more fun than uh, the usual game which even on non-historical focuses usually just goes basically the same way each and every time which is quite a shame because um, because uh, you know the game has a lot of alternative history options. It just that uh, the AI never seems to pick them at all, which is uh, again quite a shame. So today I'll be going communist as Czechoslovakia. I thought about either going communist or fascist, but since um, you know Hungary is guaranteed to go down the uh, revi the um, Austro-Hungarian path, basically, uh, and there we go, also oppose Hitler. Uh, Austro-Hungarian path, basically. Uh, from the get-go, I thought that getting rid of the bad debuff a little bit sooner might be a pretty good option just to take him out quickly and then potentially destroy Romania and join uh, either Stalin or Yugoslavia because they're going down the recognized Soviet Union path. So basically there'll be a giant communist bloc in the Balkans or in the Balkan region. We'll have to see what the Romanians do. But it seems that they're going down Balkan's dominance, so uh, I don't think we'll have an opportunity to get them um, to get them to go communist because I think they tend to go with the uh, sort of standard non-aligned paths. There we go, go left, we're going left, boys, and uh, yeah, we don't have to actually get that guy, but we might want to get partial mobilization because it's actually quite beneficial. Now, one thing that's going to be quite bothersome is that if the, uh, obviously, obvi obviously, obviously, the German military junta will win because of the massive buffs uh, of uh, August von Mikens, 
August von Mackensen. Always give them the upper edge because obviously this is all core territory and whilst uh, Adolf here is quite good when it comes to political power he's not that good when he, it comes to defending the country as we basically saw in history. <laughs> um, so it's going to be quite uh, quite a doozy to see how th things pan out. I'm also worried about Poland because if Poland joins up with the um, the Germans, um, they might pose a big threat because Poland, um, once they get rolling, they actually have quite a lot of good stuff in their tree. I was actually thinking for a little while about good doing Poland instead of Czechoslovakia, but you know, Czechoslovakia is uh, quite a good country to play as if you don't have to immediately face the threat of the Germans. Same goes for Poland, but Czechoslovakia is a little bit worse because they're smaller and they get eaten up by a single event, or two events, I suppose. And obviously they get betrayed by the West a little bit harder. So now we just all, all we have to do is just wait for the um, wait for the communist support to start rolling in and we'll do an industrial legacy which is quite uh, quite a good sort of line focus line focus tree set uh, something like that we'll do concentrated industry and um, I'm wondering if I'll well basically if I'll try if I manage to go communist before the Hungarians do the the focus to, I guess, unite uh, with Austria, then uh, I wonder if I'll even wait for them to unite and just take them out um, immediately, like regardless of, uh, regardless of the outcome, because it might, winter, sp winter expert, that won't be needed, because, um, yeah, just eat up the entirety of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, um, not quite at its full size, but you know, good enough, I suppose. And uh, actually, I'm running quite a, you know, the expanded uh, decision, expanded decision tree stuff like that. So can actually um, form Zapadoslavia, Zapadoslavia, something like that, which requires uh, Poland and Czechoslovakia, which. Maybe we just take out Poland and from that, but Poland is a little bit too strong at this time for our for our military uh, might, let's call it, even though defending the Carpathians might be the Tatra Mountains, to say, might be potentially good, but this little region here and potentially uh, Zalzi, I'm never, Zalzia, I'm never sure how to pronounce this, not even, never even been there, whatever. Um, it's uh yeah it could be it could be a tactic but i think taking out austria and hungary would be a little bit better regardless let's build up more military factories because we can we don't have to worry about the germans so that's okay and uh, however we should be looking to going for uh, limited conscription as soon as we can because uh, while well, going communist is great and all that, we don't actually have any manpower at this point, which is not great. Um, however, defeating Hungary should be okay because they start with terrible divisions. And uh, not sure if they actually get all of the get all of the uh, Austrian divisions once they unite. But I don't think so. Jesus, the, the German military jun junta, junta is actually losing, which is quite surprising. But now they're making comeback. This civil war is always strange because the the uh, German Empire or the civil war faction, whatever the uh, royalist slash democratic faction, is less aggressive. Its AI is uh, prone to being very non-aggressive. When it comes to fighting non-communists, where the um, the German Reich, I guess Hitler already died, uh, the German Reich is always aggressive. It always tries to inv invade everyone. So it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's always fun to watch this when you don't actually have to play it yourself. Um, 
the Spanish Civil War on the other hand, I'm not entirely sure how that AI works. Actually, let's check out how the United States is going. It is going... Not sure. It's communist, I see. Communist Party of the United States. Hmm. That'll be interesting, though I think they actually start with that 1% 1 1 or whatever. Whatever. So, we'll just have to see how things pan out. Actually, I'm kind of interested to see if the Austrians accept or reject the demands. And once they do that, they actually get a focus where they uh, can protect us. And if we deny it, then they can attack us, I think. I think. Maybe not. Um, I've never seen the AI deny that option when playing as Hungary, so maybe somehow hard-coded that they just accept. And the... Hmm, maybe actually I should have gone down communist support. John Comintern. Czech Socialism. Romanian question, the Polish question. Oh, so here we can actually choose our... This stuff. It's strange we don't actually get the Hungarian question, as we do with the fascist option. Let me check. There should be a Hungarian option. Yeah, the Hungarian situation. Hmm. I guess they just switched it around. That's pretty good also, more recruitable population. But I'm also running the non-core state to core state mod, as I usually do with uh, I'm playing small countries, because it's a bother to actually get um, it's a bother to actually get any manpower if you're playing as Czechoslovakia because it's a small country and uh, what's the population do I see like an overall population total hmm. no 15 million well yeah that's not much is it so yeah you can imagine that the population situation is not going to be great when dealing with manpower. So, there we go. But I think it's time to invest in the military side. Let's search doctrine. Should we go for trench or superior power? Let's go superior firepower because it's, it's a lot of fun. And also interwar artillery. Which should help us. Uh, don't have any army XP and I'm not going to just train them to lose all my stockpile because it's not actually all that great. The manpower is trickling in but not very fast so no, wor no worries there. <laughs> Alright, there we go. The United Kingdom declared war on Iraq. So you can already see that the... Um, Yeah, Delhi Communist support. Another another way to actually get manpower is to doing the Sudetenland fortifications. You can get uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Yeah, so you get overall just like 1.1.2 1 1 basically percent, which is okay. It's not the great, not the greatest, but it's uh, it's pretty decent. But it takes a long time, and we actually won't be going to war with the Germans that soon. There's no point in doing it right now, I don't think. But with uh, Austria voting to unite with Hungary, we can actually, might be able to just start and... Uh, actually building some, uh, building some units here, because... Uh, yeah, we're actually gonna need them. How many... Yeah, 24 to 31, so they actually did get all the Austrian troops, however, I think they're a little bit more worried about the, the German Empire. It's going to be a while before they go down the, the focus tree to, um, to annex. To, not to annex, but to uh, let them join the central, uh, the central powers. And then they usually get an event that um, gives them the ability to just annex the um, the Austro-Hungarian, sort of an Anschluss in disguise, I suppose. But um, yeah, let's keep building more military units because we all definitely need them. And as soon as we go communist, uh, it's uh, 29. Yeah, it's that's going to be a while. Before anything actually happens, 
How many supports? Go check socialism, which yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Just get immediately uh, rid of divided nation without actually having to compromise on uh, getting on getting less uh, civilian factories. However, I think that the democratic option, basically all the all the trees should have some sort of option like that because the Democratic one is pretty good, but uh, you're basically locked out of doing anything fun for the rest of the game, so there we go. Well, let's do more of that. Something like this. And uh, yeah. So, uh, what are we lacking? Uh, we need steel, actually, but we can just uh, sort of upgrade our steel a little bit here. So let's do that. So, uh -huh. this great government, don't think, yeah, don't think that's going to be useful yet. Um, also, our stability is quite bad at this point due to uh, due to us going uh, communist, obviously. People don't like communism, apparently. Restoration of Austria-Hungary. Their, their division unit thing count actually went down. I suppose that's because they still have the Treaty of Chianion and they can't actually uh, get any manpower so they just deleted all the units. That's wonderful. Love that. So there we go. Uh, the Hungarians won't be much of a big deal because until they actually get rid of the Treaty. Chianion? Uh, there we go. More, more communism. More communism. That's a great thing, of course. Uh, I'm always... Um, I don't know if division recovery rate or, or army offense is better. They're both pretty good. I guess army offense will just be a little bit more aggressive. Communist partisans recruiting. How is this giving us less recruitable population while Fascist assault divisions gives you more popular, more uh, recruitable population. Isn't that like? Shouldn't that work the same way? Like, almost exactly the same way. It seems a little bit strange. Uh, strategic decisions. Don't need that yet. Maybe we should go down the military technical institute. Maybe we should get more factories. That seems like a good idea. There we go. Get in the army. You're in the army now. There we go. I'm getting more manpower soon enough, so it doesn't matter that much. So how close are we? Actually, very close. So let's... Script the government and uh, wait. Of course, there was always the normal item fascism movements. Ah, it's always a always a bother. Always a bother. Discredit government that just loses ten percent because some random do discredit the government. That's that's wonderful. Some random guy, Gustav Husak. Yeah. He just ran up to the parliament and was like, Yeah, you suck. And everybody was like, mm, Damn straight, this guy's got a point. Let's make him the, uh, the supreme leader. Hold a national referendum. I wonder if he actually get rid of the partisan thing. Yeah. Well, uh... Let's see, I'm pretty sure Vienna is right for clay, but we'll have to wait. So, so there we go. So we can immediately join the commentary and Stalin's like, yay, someone's communist beside me, so let's do it. Uh, let's justify on um, 245 days. I suppose that's because the, um, what is it? Offers guarantees. We'll never give up our freedom for safety. Indeed, we'll just take it from you. We'll just eat you. Something like that. Um, 
meaning question. I'll deal with this. Um, actually, I'll do this right away. But I'll join the comment turn once we actually um, dismantle Austria Hungary, because they might get guaranteed, and I really don't want that. Uh, because France still democratic, even though I think they might be actually going. Well, they're actually not, but they always seem like they're going communist, don't they? The French, so if they go communist, that'd be great for me, of course. The British... I don't think the British changed their uh, political leanings at all. The Slavians are going communist as well, which is brilliant. I think we still... Yep, yeah, they just they just flipped. <laughs> so far. Good. The communist tree for uh, Yugoslavia is actually really powerful because you could read of rid of all your debuffs uh, with the uh, the federal from the federal republic. You just get rid of all your bad debuffs. You should definitely rush that as soon as possible. The AI usually doesn't, and it, it gets destroyed because of that. So uh, it's a thought. Um, Let's do more military stuff, because we'll be needing it quite soon. To crush the Hungarians, or the Austro-Hungarians, I suppose. See, their unit count keeps decreasing, because they're still disarmed, so... Don't need to worry about them that much at the moment. Uh, in a little while, maybe so, maybe so, but not quite yet. Not quite yet. Um, because, yeah, I think we'll have this in the bag quite soon. Spain also went communist, the, the uh, Republicans won, which I think is stupid. Um, this is obviously on a non-historical and it's uh, the world alternative, so that's completely fine. But, when playing historical focuses, I think the Republicans should never win, like, ever. Because that's, that, it's just, 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 I'm not gonna call it, like, Impossible, but it's just a tad bit ridiculous <laughs> on historic historical games up until 1939. I think the AI should always go exactly as the sort of world went, as history went, as history went. So it's just um, yeah, I just have a hard time accept accepting that type of deal. Uh, we're actually running out of space when it comes to building our stuff, so... Might need to take out them Hungarians quite soon. I wonder, their, all their units are actually half strength, like... This guy's actually under half strength. 4 to 8. <laughs> okay, I, I can see that you're... Putting up quite a good fight, Hungary. Actually, I think that if you were to form Austria-Hungary with Austria, you'd actually be in a much better situation when compared to forming it with Hungary, because Hungary has really bad debuffs, so they should have just given Austria the option to do the thing, not Hungary, but hey, who am I to talk? Maybe just both of them, because, you know, there's Austria and Hungary. Wow, what a thought. What an insane thought, right? Um, regardless. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite, quite a deal. Okay, so I'll be back when we actually manage to uh, attack Austria-Hungary. Alright, so we're back and ready to attack. Let's do it. I think it should be just completely easy. Let's go to aggressive stance. We have quite a lot more divisions than they do, so... Yeah... We can accept Soviet volunteers. Hmm. I don't think I'll agree, um, I'll accept because I... What, what the hell? I really hate when the aggressive AI t decides to do something like this, but, you know, might as well just encircle them. So... Jesus Christ, no encirclement involved then. Though, oh, this actually might be quite a good opportunity to do something like this. Yep, there we go. It circles quite a decent chunk of their... but the aggressive AI really is just a little bit strange when it comes to stuff like this. They always let themselves get surrounded. I, 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 I get why they do s such things, but that was a really quick war. Man, the Austro-Hungarians were quite weak. 
can we reinstate our own? Hmm, no. What do we need? Can I actually do it? Jeez, man. How rude. I thought we'd be able to. Hmm. Maybe in the vanilla game I actually can. Great Moravia. I actually need quite a lot of that territory to do that. Okay, well, I guess we can't do that, but we can form Visegrad if we take out Poland. So, now we own all of Austria-Hungary, or what used to be Austria-Hungary. We could also join up with uh, Stalin and just demolish uh, Yugoslavia, which would be quite spicy. But I think Italy was going to do something like that quite soon, so... Maybe we'll deal with the Romania instead. So, um, yeah, the research is all done. Can do delay. And, uh, hmm, maybe we'll get synthetic oil. Let's do research slot, uh, research first. <laughs> Not quite, yeah, not quite. Get more equipment going, more tanks, more more air, more tanks just in general, because we'll be needing that quite soon. And um yeah, so move the move the airplanes to this region. I wonder if the Romanians will actually demand this. Can they? Yeah, it's ours now. Because we were unable to form the Austro-Hungarian Empire, um, I suppose the non core to core is actually serving its purpose. I really thought that that should be an option. So let's join the common turn and then do the Romanian question. I don't think they're actually guaranteed by anyone at this point, apart from us, obviously, and we're not going to uphold that agreement. Um, maybe the Italians are going to be a, an issue here. But I don't think so. Um, if they decide to attack... Can you actually bypass that? I don't, I'm not entirely sure. don't think so. Um, hmm. Oh, army logistics. Logistics. Uh, but that means that we can actually upgrade our stuff. And I, well, that's actually I completely forgot about artillery. Let's do this. Something like this. Yes, indeed. But we do need steel, which is a bother, obviously. But let's just get it from the USSR. That should fix the issue, yep. The oil is going to be a big problem, but if we manage to... If we manage to... Uh, somehow... Uh, get it, get the region from Romania right here, this one, I think, this one. If we manage to do that, that would be completely fine, but if we don't, then we'll just have to go with synth synthetics or get it from the Soviets, which is very undesirable, so maybe we'll actually just go for the synthetics. Hmm. That's going to be quite a bother, though, because I don't like getting stuff from other nations. I love to just sort of build it myself and uh, just deal with that that way. Yep. Because uh, you lose factories and obviously you lose factories when you build the thing but it's more um, it's much more secure when you do it that way when you build it yourself. Queen China also I suppose, excellent. Uh, I suppose J Japan is also going communist. Yes, they are, which is brilliant. Japan is going communist. Czechoslovak Union joins commentary. You never actually see these events unless you do them yourselves, and even so, very few people do it, so it's. So, what are we buying? We're buying steel, right? Um, so. These guys are having, like, no steel. Because we have all that aluminum. Aluminium? Aluminum? 
Uh, at least we have all that aluminum and uh, stuff, but the steel industry is looking quite bad in our country, <laughs> which is quite a pity, but at least we can build a lot of planes, eh? So that's that. Um, yeah, political power is going up, but I know I wonder how this actually turns out. Because um, at this point, we'll just shred the Romanians. Um, how many divisions do they have? Yeah. At this point, we'll just shred them, like completely. But it might be an issue um, if the Soviets somehow get like a complete majority of the country or something like that. It's going to be quite a problem for me. What do we need? We need artillery. Thought we were producing <laughs> artillery. Okay. Well, it's going to take a while. How much do we actually need? 305, we're making three. Brilliant. That's going to take like two days, roughly, right? Yeah. Excellent. Exactly. Communist science at work here. Uh. <laughs> But if we actually manage to get the oil fields, oil fields, that's all I care about, the oil fields. Um, don't really need anything else from the Romanians at this point. Because I... I don't know. That's basically it. Do they have any steel? Not supply. Uh, what is it? Resistance. Resource. Not much steel. That oil, though. The Romanian oil fields. Need that. Do need that quite bad right now. Uh, the Soviets don't need that, right? Maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll let me keep it. Uh, hopefully the Soviets are actually doing the Great Purge, though. Yeah, they did it. Okay, Romanian problem. Excellent. We can uh, destroy Romania. Are they guaranteed? No. Let's uh, do it. And uh, let's uh, not let's let's just do the extra research slot. Let's call in the Soviets into this a little war, because on our own I don't think we'll actually manage to push through the. I mean, it's that easy. But with the Soviets distracting them, you know, we can split this country nice, nice and tidy like. Um, even if we don't manage to get the oil fields, I think that the industry from the Romanians. If we at least get something, and also the manpower due to the mod is going to be quite a big help. Um, because it's uh, it's going to allow us to at least build the synthetics quite a bit easier. Oh shit, we're running out of that. Yeah, even though it's the 48. Hmm. This is a tank guy. Don't have any tanks yet, but when we will have them, we'll give it to him. <laughs> this guy, by the way, how's his uh, infantry expert looking? Yeah, I see he's about to get it, so that's completely fine. And uh, actually, the Soviets aren't pushing much. Maybe do they still have the bad, the bad effects. Yes, they. Oh man, they have the worst, the worst, the worst effect right now. So. Mm. Have they formed their own faction yet? No. I mean, regardless, if they do, we'll just get them. But if they manage to join the common turn, we actually might get a good slice of Italy. Which would be quite good. Uh, huh. There's a period. Yeah, sure. Let's disguise our sea, right? So, let's do that. Are actually getting to the oil fields quite a lot sooner than the Soviets. We actually lost less men to the Soviets, which is nice. Oh no, the Soviets got it. Uh, wait, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, they just captured it. Shit. Well, I'll try to get in the peace deal. So, if we just do this. No. What about if I wanted just that one? They'll puppet it, okay. And then we can get these two. The borders are going to be terrible, but... <laughs> but, um... It's 31, why can't I take it? Pass, yep. Okay, so the borders are going to be terrible. 
And uh, so this is the Czechoslovak corridor, and this is probably going to the Soviets anyway, right? Maybe you can take it. Oh, no. Yeah, just give it to them, okay. But I wanted the oil, and I got the oil. That's all I care about. Did we get the oil, right? Yes, we got the oil. Brilliant. Yes, brilliant. Immediately build it up. Level 1 plus 9, but still better than nothing. Also, we get some factories out of it, which is always good. And we have access to the sea. I didn't think about it, but we actually have access to the sea. We can build some convoys. Let's do it. Czechoslovakia is getting a thick and long. A long schlong. Okay, so these borders are absolutely hideous, but... Um, now we can take out Yugoslavia without any worries at all. We should also start building some tanks, though. Uh, do we have the... No, we don't have that researched yet. Might actually want to take out Poland here in a short while, but... With the... Um, you know, we created 15% little tension. Don't really see that much from the Czechoslovakians. But, um... Killing... Are we, we actually in a faction with Stalin? So I don't think he'll kick us out if we actually attack the... Hmm. So it's quite strange we don't actually get a common turn option here. I Probably that's why, actually. Cancel guarantee with a Safari Goslav. It might do this. Is that gonna work? Would that work? Trust in the West. Huh. Yeah, this is a... Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting text. <laughs> uh, totally not um, crying right now or anything. Okay, so... Oh, let's get then medium tanks actually, South Africa. Um, yeah, trusting in the West right now is a bad, bad option. So let's see, still not doing anything, so I think I'll call it, might call it a pretty good option just to justify Yugoslavia right now. They're communists, they won't get protected by anyone. I'm worried about Italy though. And Bulgaria is going fascist. Because if Italy attacks them, they'll get into war with the USSR regardless of me being also aggressive with the... Did he get it? Yes, he did. Good. Uh, reg regardless if we are also aggressive against the Yugoslavians, so... I don't know. Let's just let's just justify on them. Uh, let's get Slovenia, of course. And uh, it's going to be quite interesting. So s they just turned communist, and we we're just going to betray them like that. I can snap a finger, drop of a hat. We're just going to betray them. <laughs> oh, brilliant! This is exactly what communism was about. Marx was right. Not exactly. But th I'm sure this is what he would imagine true communism to look like. People killing each other for no apparent reason, just, just for fun, sort of, kind of, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, huh. Maybe let's get, yeah, let's get some engineers going. Actually, let's recruit more infantry. Thinking about making these guys just have this kind of field marshal. Just have one field marshal of infantry and one field marshal of uh, tanks. That might be a bit dumb though. Maybe just one field marshal of infantry and more tank guys. They don't even have any tanks built yet. I'm talking about like having all of them. Because I need this focus right here to be done. Exactly, and uh, oh. access to the sea. Brilliant, <laughs> love that. 
Uh, yep, let's get some more armored focuses going. Uh, as soon as this finishes, we'll get some motorized and we can finally build some good tank units. I really, really don't get why the light tank 2 is researched um, sooner than the than a, f than a jeep or car, basically. <laughs> we don't know how to drive cars, but we can sure drive tanks. Exactly, that's exactly how the conversation went. Completely accurate. Mm -hmm. No worries. Uh, so how's our steel situation? It's still terrible. Steel is still terrible. Mm -hmm. But let's start building some tanks. Mediums. I do like to have a mix. One general with light tanks, one general with medium tanks. It's generally how I think should, things should look like, but I don't know. Actually, how many... do you have quite a lot of artillery, right? Well, not that much. Can't just change the template. Tame, tame plate. Can't just change the template right now to, to be purely... purely... Uh, Uh, purely, um, 7-2. Not quite yet. Uh, soon enough, though. There we go. Now we can, uh, change the Rihla Divisa to actually have, s actually be quick, as the name suggests. Rihla Divisa. Okay, there we go. Let's give it some engineers and support artillery. Bam! Now let's start making it. Uh, we should also start producing some of these, some of these uh, trucks, because not producing them would be quite the mistake. There you go. Something like that. And uh, at this point, I think I'll call it quits for today. Uh, we've actually made uh, Czechoslovakia quite thick and then quite um, weird around here, but we're still connected, still connected, as you can see, we are a united nation. <laughs> Jeez, but the Comintern um, is looking uh, quite interesting, quite interesting, and when uh, also the Japanese People's Republic joins us, and maybe even Evil, maybe even uh, France. And let's actually take a look how the United States going. It's very good. Okay, they're going fascist, but it doesn't actually matter that much because I don't think we'll actually get into conflict with them. The Germans have gone with the uh, revive the Kaiserreich focus. Yes, so they'll be going to war with us, but that means that they'll be form forming the Central Powers. And we have denied them the uh, Austro-Hungarians. We have denied them the... Well, we were about to deny them the Italians. And we'll also have the French on our side and we'll dismantle the Polish, hopefully, quite soon. The British are going to be too busy fighting off all their rebellions in the colonies. Because uh, Tatra Steel? Tata. Okay, I was like, well, because actually uh, these are the Tatar Mountains, I was like, why are the Indians here? Like, what are they doing? But, um, but no, uh, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be dismantling Yugoslavia soon, then Italy, then uh, Poland, hopefully, uh, maybe Bulgaria along the way, because they're actually going fascist, and uh, Republic of Spain is also on our side, so that would be... That'd be great. Let's get an aggression pack with them. Yes. Okay, so uh, I want to thank you guys very much for watching and uh, see you next time.